Hello everyone. So today we are going to have a detailed explanation about the dissolution of the partnership form and the various accounts to be maintained under a partnership dissolution. So before going to the term dissolution of partnership form, let's divide this term into two. That is one is the dissolution and one is the partnership. So what is actually a partnership? A partnership is an agreement between two or more, per two or more persons to they will agree to share the profits and losses in a particular ratio under the partnership agreement or the partnership deal. So I hope that you got an understanding about what partnership is. So next we move to the topic dissolution of the partnership firm. So before moving to the topic, we should have an understanding about what is the difference between a partner and a firm. A partner is an individual person who is working in a company or is, who is working in a firm is known as a partner and they together are collectively known as the firm. So, the members involved in the partnership are known as partners individually while they are jointly known as firm. So, dissolution of partnership firm is a complete closure or winding up of a business company. Then, we should have an understanding about the what is the dissolution of a partnership and what is the dissolution of a firm. As I'm already told that the partner and the firm is totally a different uh, scenario. So you should be able to understand what is the difference between a dissolution of partnership and dissolution of firm. Indian Partnership Act of 1932, it's a clearly distincting between dissolution of partnership and dissolution of firm. A dissolution of partnership means the termination of the existing old agreement between the partners. This will actually takes place in terms of pre-constitution of partners. Sometimes when in for a company, maybe sometimes if some partner will join the company or some partner will be admitted to the company or sometimes the partner will retire from the company or many may death occur to a particular partner. In such cases, the reconstitution will happen. In the reconstitution, the old partnership agreement is dissolved and a new partnership agreement is created. But in the case of, and it refers to the change in the existing relationship it, between the partners, but the firm may continue its business as before. And this is an important area because in dissolution of partnership, the firm is not uh, stopping or the firm is not ceasing. The firm may continue its activities or the firm may continue its business. It is only just a reconstitution between the partnership agreement. Maybe they'll um, make a new profit sharing ratio or maybe they will uh, create new terms and conditions in the partnership agreement. So in this scenario, the partners may create a new uh, partnership deed or partnership agreement and a new profit sharing ratio. This is known as the dissolution of the partnership. While the dissolution of firm is completely different from a dissolution of partnership. The dissolution of firm is the complete closure or complete breakdown of a business. The business is no more continuing in case of a dissolution of firm. Because we know that dissolution of a firm is a dissolution between all the partners in the firm. So, in a dissolution of a firm, the firm is no more continuing, the firm is ceasing or it, the firm is ceasing its all activities or stopping its all activities. So, it means a complete closing down the undertaking or suspending permanently the activities of a partnership business. So, in a dissolution of firm, the, the firm is completely or permanently closing its activities of business. And if it refers to the complete breakdown of a partnership and partners do not continue the firm. This is an important uh, area that is the partners do not continue the firm in a dissolution of firm. And according to the section 39 of Indian Partnership Act of 1932, the dissolution of partnership between all the partners of a firm is called the dissolution of firm. Suppose if ABC Limited is a company or a partnership formed under the Partnership Act of 1932 and they are intending for a dissolution of firm, then ABC Limited ceases its operations and it will go for a complete dissolution or the dissolution of firm. So now we are going to have a look on the what is the difference between, what is the detailed difference between dissolution of a partnership and dissolution of a firm. So I, I mentioned some criterion here and we will analyze that what is the difference between the dissolution of partnership and dissolution of firm. The first one is on the basis of meaning. 
on the basis of meaning under dissolution of partnership there is only a change in the partnership agreement i have mentioned you earlier that there is only a change in the partnership agreement that is a change in the terms and conditions between the partners and if it, if it, there is a change in the profit sharing ratio then it comes under the category of the dissolution of partnership but in the dissolution of firm it is a dissolution between all the partners the relationship between all the partners is breaking and no more relationship or no more business is continuing in case of a dissolution of firm and next comes the breakdown of business there is a breaking of relationship between partners but the firm continues i have already mentioned you that in the case of dissolution of partnership the firm will continue this is only a reconstitution of the partnership agreement but the uh, relationship between or the firm will continue its business and will carry out its activities after the reconstitution and the reconstitution will be mainly applicable in the case of admission of a partner in case of death of a partner or in the case of a retirement of a partner and for the dissolution of firm it is a complete breakdown of relationship between all the partners because the, the it is a complete closure of the business it is a complete winding up of the business so the relationship between all the partners are breaking down here and next comes the books books of accounts in this case in the dissolution of partnership the books may not be closed because it is not necessarily for the company to close the books of account as the business is continuing the, the firm may or may not close the book, books of accounts so it is not compulsory in case of dissolution of partnership to close the books of accounts while in the case of dissolution of firm the firm has to close the books of accounts i have already mentioned you that in this complete closure or complete permanently suspending or permanent winding up of the company so the firm has to close the books of accounts and next comes the dissolution dissolution of partnership does not mean the dissolution of firm but in case of dissolution of firm necessarily means the dissolution of partnership also because the relationship between all the partners are breaking so it will definitely cause the dissolution of partnership and next comes the nature dissolution of partnership may be voluntarily emerge out of agreement because agreement is a so uh, powerful weapon in a dissolution of partnership because it is a change in the agreement the terms and condition and the profit sharing ratio so it will be taken place as a voluntary one but in the case of dissolution of firm it may be voluntarily or may be a compulsory one and finally dissolution by court the intervention of court is it's another important area maybe court will intervene in the affairs of the company or affairs of the partnership firm so partnership firm in the in the form of dissolution of partnership firm it is not ordered by the court court may not intervene in the in the condition or in the case of a dissolution of partnership but court will definitely intervene if any unlegal or unlawful or illegal activities are uh, have been taken from the part, part of a firm then the court will definitely involve in that case and it will issue a dissolution or the court will order an issue of dissolution by the firm okay so these are the major differences between a dissolution of partnership and a dissolution of firm and next we are going to have an analysis on the modes of dissolution what are the different modes of dissolution so basically the dissolution modes can be classified into two categories one is the dissolution without the intervention of the court so the next one will be obviously the dissolution with the intervention of the court so the modes of the dissolution can be categorized into basically two categories one is the dissolution without the intervention of the court and one is the dissolution with the intervention of the court let's have a look on what all are the modes of dissolution without the intervention of the court the first one is the when all partners agree to dissolve the firm under the section 40 of the indian Com partnership act of 1932 and next is a compulsory dissolution which is explained in the section 41 of the indian partnership act and under compulsory dissolution it will be uh, the firm will dissolve the organization under the following situation the first one is when all or all but one partner of the firm become insolvent when the business of the firm was unlawful when the number of partner exceed 20 and when an citizen of enemy country becomes a partner under this four scenarios the the firm will go for compulsory dissolution 
under section 40 so it can be concluded as the compulsory dissolution can takes place when the partner become insolvent or the number of partners exceed 20 or the business become unlawful or if any a citizen from any country becomes a partner of the uh, firm and next is the third point is the on happening of the any of the following events which is explained under section 42 if any of these incidents has happened in the organization then the uh, it will go for a compulsory dissolution so the first one is a dissolution by agreement all among the partners in agreement itself the partners is agreeing to dissolve the organization or dissolve the firm then it will go for a uh, section 42 go for a dissolution under section 42 dissolution of partnership by notice if case of partnership at will in case of partnership at will if any partners are sent a notice regarding dissolution then they can wind up the organization and dissolution on a complete on the completion of a venture if some partnership are formed in order to complete a particular venture maybe some partnership firm will form to complete a particular building or particular project then after the completion of completion of the project or after the completion of the venture they will be dissolved on the insolvency of a partner and the last point is dissolution on the expiry of the term for which the firm was formed sometimes the firm will uh, begin on particular terms or maybe they will form for a five years or ten year after the completion of the particular time period time period the firm will be dissolved and next is a dissolution by the order of the court which is explained in the section 44 and the court may order the dissolution of the partnership firm under the following circumstances the first one is when a partner become of unsound or insane mind and the next one is when it is not possible to run the partnership business except at a loss. So in the case of loss also the partnership will be dissolved. When a partner is guilty of misconduct and cause harm to the partnership firm and when a partner is responsible for the breach of the partnership agreement. If there is any breach or violation has been made from the partner then it will cause in a dissolution. And finally, the court may also order to dissolve the firm on any ground it feels that just and equitable to do so. If the court is feeling that it is right and just to uh, dissolve the particular organization, maybe they are running in an illegal manner or an unlawful manner, then the court will order for a dissolution under section 44. And finally, we are going to have a look on what all are the accounts to be maintained under a dissolution of partnership firm. Mainly, we are focusing or mainly we are maintaining four accounts regarding the resolution, uh, dissolution and the basic um, account or the main important account to be kept under dissolution is the realization account and next is the partner's loan account and then the partner's capital or current account and finally, we have to prepare the bank account. So, we will have a look on what all these accounts in a detail way. And the first one is a realization account. Realization is account is actually a nominal account which is prepared to find out the realization profit and the loss. Maybe sometimes the realization will uh, result in a profit or in a loss. In realization, we have to transfer all the assets and liability and the, all the assets should be realized and the, all the liability should be paid up. Because I've already told you that this is a complete winding up of a company. So every asset should be realized and every liability should be paid up. And we have to find the realization profit or loss and we have to share these profit or loss to the partners in their cap profit sharing ratio. Next is the partner's loan account. Partner's loan account is actually a liability to the organization. When we are receiving any loan from the partner, we should have to pay it back off, uh, on the winding up. So the entry will be, when we, when we are making any payment to the partner, then the entry will be partner's loan account debt to bank. We have to record this entry in the books of the firm. And next comes the partner's capital account. These partner's capital accounts is prepared to show the adjustments in capital. We have to adjust all the accumulated profits, all the accumulated losses and the general reserve. Everything should be related to capital should be adjusted to the partner's capital account and we have to find the final amount which may be due or due from the due to the partner or due from the partner should be find out using preparing the partner's capital account. And the last account to be prepared under the dissolution is a bank account. All the transactions relating to the bank should, should be incorporated in the bank account. And we should begin the bank account with the bank balance which is given in the asset side of the balance sheet. And also every transaction which is relating to the cash or bank should be entered into that. And the amount due from partners or amount due to partners should be also shown in the bank account. So I hope that you, are, you all are clear with the term dissolution and the various accounts to be maintained under dissolution. That's all about this topic. Thank you.